Hi, my name's Father. <laughs> that was really quick. We're gonna slow down, take a breath. <sighs> Hi, my name is Father Mike Schmitz, and this is Essential Presents. So, whenever we get close to the 4th of July or Independence Day here in the United States, I always just, um, not only am I grateful, grateful for the fact that I live in the United States of America, but also my mind just goes to um, the reality of what it is that the founding, founding fathers did, you know, back in 1776, where government of the people, by the people, for the people, which is remarkable, you know? As a subject, you get ruled and, and you have a king over you or a queen over you, some kind of emperor, some kind of president of some sort, and they just they basically dictate, here is what your life is like. But if you're a citizen, what you're called to do is you're called to participate. And I think this is really phenomenal. You know, um, I listened to a, a commencement speech by Dr. Peter Kreeft. Um, one of the things he mentioned was he mentioned the Statue of Liberty which is incredible, obviously. We love the Statue of Liberty. Um, but he noted that Viktor Frankl, over 70 years ago, Viktor Frankl said there should be a second statue. Because here as Americans, right, we're, we're pretty preoccupied with liberty. We're, we're very preoccupied with, with our rights. We're very preoccupied with freedom, which is wonderful. But Viktor Frankl pointed out that while we have the Statue of Liberty, we should have a twin statue, the Statue of Responsibility which I think is remarkable, right? Because we are, <laughs> uh, gosh, we live in a country, in a culture, not just in the United States, but all over the world, that is obsessed with our rights, aren't we? We're, we're very preoccupied with the rights we get. Like, I demand my rights here and demand my rights there. God, rights are good, rights are incredible. A lot of rights are God-given. But with every right, there is a concurrent responsibility. And if we have a right to liberty, we have a right to freedom, then we also must have a right to responsibility. In fact, I'll say this so many times. We did a, we did a course on baptism, and part of, part of the course in baptism is called belonging. Um, we talked about the fact that when you get baptized, you're brought into a real relationship with God. You're brought into a real relationship with the church. And a lot of times in relationships, we say, oh, now, now that I have this relationship, I have access. And you do, right? Because you've been baptized, you have access to the Father's heart. You have access to the throne of grace. As a member of the church, you have complete access to the church. You, you are a member of Christ's body. Incredible. So a real relationship gives you real rights. But if we think about this, every real relationship in our lives not only has real rights, but has real responsibilities. Yeah, I can belong to a family. So yes, I get to walk right in the house. You don't have to knock, I don't have to ring the doorbell. I get to walk right in. But also, mom and dad can say, hey, your chore this week is this. They might be able to say, I know you want to go out, but here, we're doing this instead. In every real relationship, we have both real rights and real responsibilities. And that's, that's the price of being a citizen rather than a subject. Being a citizen rather than a subject means you have real rights. You're not ruled, we're governed, yes, but you have rights. That also means you and I have real responsibilities. So there's this man, his name is Oz Guinness. How do we do this? Like, how do we maintain this liberty? How do we maintain this freedom? How do we live out these rights? Os Guinness, he says, you know, the, the founding fathers did an incredible job of, you know, fighting for freedom. That was the revolutionary, Re revolutionary war, right? Then they did a good job of ordering freedom, and that was the Constitution. But they had the, the, the complex task of, of trying to figure out how do you maintain freedom? Like in this world right now, in this country right now, and around the world where they have freedoms like we have in the United States, we have the, the fight for freedom, probably had the ordering of freedom. How do we maintain freedom? How do you maintain a free society? Well, Os Guinness, uh, he proposes what he calls the golden triangle of freedom. And it's, it's virtue, freedom, and faith. And he has it like a recycling pyramid, kind of a tri recycling triangle. He says, virtue requires faith. That if you're going to be a person of character, right, a person of virtue, a person of courage, of honesty, of integrity, you'd be that kind of person who's not just in the light but also in private. You're that person of integrity, a person of virtue, right? You need to have some kind of faith. Now, phony fathers didn't say any what kind of faith, but you have to have faith that there's more to this life than just this life. In fact, John Adams had said the only way democracy could ever thrive is among a religious people. Why? Because if you're not a religious people and you want to keep people, people in order, what do you need? You need more laws. But if you're a religious people, then you don't need as many laws because you don't need the government to come into your life because you know that even if the government misses on you're breaking this law or, or committing this sin, the Lord God is there 
and you have a higher law that you need to answer to that's even above the government, right? So you need to have faith. So virtue requires faith. But faith, in order to live that faith and exercise that faith, requires freedom. You have to be able to say no to that or say yes to that. And freedom <laughs> requires virtue. To be able to live as a free person requires that you be a person of character, a person of courage, a person of integrity, a person of honesty, which requires faith. Right? See, that, that triangle is that virtue requires faith, faith requires freedom, and freedom requires virtue. It's one of the reasons why we know that uh, the more healthy uh, a nation is, the more healthy a culture is, the more virtuous it is. We have to ask the question, how long can a culture last if it doesn't hold on to virtue? Not, that, not as a culture, but its citizens. How long can freedom be maintained if we don't interiorly say, regardless of whether I get away with it or get busted, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to strive, not be perfect, obviously, I'm going to strive to be a person of courage, a person of honesty, a person of integrity, a person of character, a person of virtue. And how long can, can freedom be maintained if we don't have our faith to rely on? And not only is there faith to rely on, but also the freedom to be able to practice our faith, right? So we need this golden triangle of freedom. We live in, in, in an incredible time right now. It's a, it's a dangerous time. It's a crisis time. But and then again, every time is. Because every moment, ever since the founding of our country, maybe in every moment since the establishment of Christianity, has necessitated virtue has necessitated not only real rights, but also real responsibilities. And you and I get to do that. We don't have to worry about what's happening in the White House. We can be more preoccupied with what's happening in our own house and say, okay, just like Joshua said, whatever you do, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord, live out a real relationship, which means living a life of real rights, and real responsibilities, a life based on virtue, faith, and freedom. Anyways, that's what I got today from all of us here at Presents. My name is Father Mike. God bless.